examples of of uh, identifying voices on the battlefield, which should have been inadmissible evidence, but that was not objected to because uh, they're not there testifying about who he identified on the uh, battlefield, which cannot be verified and authenticated because those people are not there. Uh, that's not the issue in this case. So why is he, uh, why is he allowed to talk about uh, the identification of, of uh, dying soldiers and who they were on, on, on the uh, battlefield when that's not the issue in this case. The issue in this case is can you identify the voice of Trayvon Martin, not somebody else. Uh, so, you know, but the man was very credible, credible and very believable. So I think his testimony alone, they're going to just, if they discard the testimony of the mother, and the father, uh, and the brother, and the mother of uh, Zimmerman. The one that's going to stand out in their mind is that is that uh, Vietnam vet. Case over. Not guilty because they because the defense counsel got to give him his props. He did a very good job. The defense defense counsel took the time and effort to go out and secure witnesses that would prove the most important issue in this case. The defense counsel, not the state, took the time to go out and collect about 10 different witnesses to put forward to prove the most important issue in this case. How many did the, uh, the state put forward? Two. Two biased witnesses, the mom and the brother. However, the defense counsel was acting like they had the burden of proof. The defense counsel had the dad, they had the expert witness, the Vietnam vet, then they had the two police officers come and testify uh, for the defense. Now, where in the world have you ever seen the police officers testify against the DA? We all know that the DA and the police law enforcement work together. To prove a crime, to get a crime did occur. That's what police officers do. They prove crimes occurred. They arrest people and they come and testify in court on behalf of the DA to prove the VA's case. That's the that's what happens in 99.99 percent .99 of all cases. However, here we have a police officer that are testifying on behalf of the defendant. We have two police officers here that are testifying on behalf of the uh, defense. Isn't that unusual? Isn't that just out of this world? You never hear of, you have never heard of that. That's all because the DA and the prosecution are on the same side. When the DA when it, when these two police officers were testifying against the DA against the DA's case, they're actually working on behalf of the DA's case because the DA in the, in the, in the uh, defense counsel are working, uh, seem to be working on the same side regarding this issue. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't this something? Here we have two police officers in this case testifying on behalf of the defense. Isn't that strange? Doesn't that, doesn't that seem strange to you? You got police officers saying that no, it was not the de the, the uh, defendant's voice. No, it was not George Zimmerman's voice. Hmm. Well, they said the police police officer said that it was it was uh well Trayvon's daddy said that he could not say that it was uh, uh, Trayvon's voice. We were present and we heard Trayvon's daddy say that he could not identify the voice as Trayvon. That was not Trayvon's voice. That's what those police officers were testifying to. So that evidence is going to destroy, help destroy the state's case. Trayvon daddy said the police officer lying. And not only did he have the, uh, 
the dad, the expert witness, the two police officers, he had five other friends coming out of the neighborhood. He had, and that's, that's, that's direct evidence on the, by the uh, defense attorney. He had, I don't know how many he had, he had about eight or ten witnesses to testify to this important issue regarding the identity of the voice on the 911 tape. Oh man, can you believe that? About nine, eight, nine, ten witnesses to testify regarding this important uh, testimony. Hmm. All these people. And he don't even have the burden of proof. And guess what? The DA only had two witnesses on this issue. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Does it seem like the DA trying to lose the case? He knew about how many witnesses and who the witnesses would be before they came to court. The DA knew that the defense counsel would have 8, 10, 12, well, however many he had witnesses to testify on this issue regarding the voice identification of the 911 uh, tape. Why didn't the DA go out and try and counteract these, this testimony by, by uh, uh, having an expert testify? Why didn't the DA go out and have the cousins, uncles, the, the, the school teachers that that taught Trayvon, the, uh, the, the, uh, the football coaches, friends and family of the community to come into court and testify on, on behalf of her case, on behalf of Trayvon's case, like the uh, defense counsel did. The defense counsel went out and found out and found all of these excellent witnesses. Why didn't the state go out and find these witnesses? They didn't even look for any witnesses. We just got we just got the mom and the brother, as far as they're gonna go, and the burden of proof is on them. So what? What does it? What does it smell like to you? It smell like they want to win this case, or it smell like a a, a a strong fight. The defense got all of these witnesses to testify on direct as evidence in their case. That's not even considering the rebuttal witnesses that the defense had. Um, on the state's case, uh, another excellent witness for the for the uh, defense was the uncle of Zimmerman, who came in there with that that fantasy story, uh, like he had written a script. Uh, he was an excellent witness to rebut the uh, testimony on the, of the state's case. He was brought in as a rebuttal witness in the state's case. The uncle of Zimmerman came in there and testified that he heard he was on the tight ride, he was on a computer, and he heard a voice on the TV, and he. He knew it was his his, his uh he knew it was his uh, nephew's uh, voice before he even heard the name, which is crazy. You can, I can tell he was he had acting he had uh, was acting. He was an excellent witness, but that just goes to show you that uh, the defense was serious when they were putting together uh, witnesses and the number and quality of witnesses to uh, provide his evidence to prove this issue. Just the contrary to the state. The state laid back and said, I'm going to let y'all just run over me. I ain't even going to try. I'm only going to put two witnesses. Y'all got 12, 13 witnesses. Vietnam vets, police officers, aunts, uncles, cousins, mamas. You got everybody in the in in in, in a, uh, Stanford apartheid floor come and testify regarding this issue. What am I gonna get? I'm gonna get the mom in the door. So y'all go ahead on. We're gonna lay down. <laughs>